Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today I want to compare the spectrum analyzer modes of my two oscilloscopes, also known as FFT mode or Fast Fourier Transform. I use my oscilloscopes for testing audio and I just wanted to compare the spectrum analyzer modes to see you know which scope is better. So here I have my Rigel DS1052E. I got this about six years ago. It's actually been on the market for quite a while. I think it first came out in 2007. So it is quite dated. And I'm not sure, but it still might be in production. Up here is a much newer scope. It's the Siglent SDS2202X-E. These new scopes have a lot of features. Well, this one's not quite entry level, but a lot of entry scopes have about the same functionality. This just happens to be a 200 megahertz version of the scope. So yeah, want to take a look at the spectrum analyzer modes and see how they perform. Before I get into the actual comparison, there's a few things I need to cover. First off, is the FFT modes of these scopes are really not that good for testing amplifier distortion. The reason is due to the bit depth. Most oscilloscopes will have only an 8-bit depth. That means there's only 256 discrete steps of amplitude data that it can store. If you invert 256 and multiply that by 100 to get percentage, each discrete step is 0.39% of the full scale. So when we take a look at the FFT modes, that means the smallest harmonic that I could see will be only about 0.4%. So if I turn on the FFT mode, let's turn off the channel 1 display so I can see that. This is the FFT mode. You're probably familiar with that if you watch my channel. I use it quite often. So I'm injecting a 1 kilohertz signal into the scope from my preamp. And this is a fundamental and this here is a pilot signal. That's part of the signal I'm inputting that's non-harmonically related to the fundamental and that just allows me to compare the actual harmonics. So if there's any non-linearity in the amplifier it will create harmonics. See normally you're looking at the waveform which is an amplitude versus time and in FFT mode we're looking at the amplitude versus frequency. And like I said, this is the fundamental and any harmonics would be a multiple frequency of that. So if this is one kilohertz, you could see a harmonic at two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four, and so on. So here's a drawing I made that might describe it a little better. So here is the fundamental you're seeing and depending on the nature of the nonlinearities of the circuit, it can create different harmonics of multiples of this frequency showing here. Now the oscilloscope must be set up properly, or you'll see what I call bogies. And this is not a real harmonic. My preamp, which is right here, has very low distortion. The lowest I measured it was 0 0.004, and that was even passing the signal through this amplifier circuit here. So I'm certain that that amplifier and the preamp have much lower distortion than that. It's just a limitation of my computer. So what's causing that? Well, the scope itself is. I have to turn acquisition mode into peak detect to get rid of that. And now you see there's just noise, the fundamental, and my pilot signal. Now like I said before, with only an 8-bit depth, I should only be able to see down to about 0.4% of the fundamental. And my uh, pilot signal I'm using for demonstration now is at 1%. And I can turn that up higher. It just makes the noise higher as well. But let me turn this down to a uh, smaller value. Okay, 
now we're at 0.3 percent so why am I still able to see that if my bit depth would only allow me to see down to about 0.4 percent before it's lost in the noise floor the reason for that is oversampling the oscilloscope is taking that 8-bit sample at several times per second and for it to be able to properly represent a waveform on the screen it has to take so many samples per second and that happens to be the Nyquist limit so it has to sample at a minimum of double the frequency and in the real world it's usually a bit more than that so if I have a uh, waveform and it's nonlinear and it produces harmonics say there's a harmonic way out here at whatever uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 say there's a harmonic at 10 that'd be 10 kilohertz so the scope would have to sample at at least 20 kilohertz to be able to properly represent that if it was sampling at less than that it could cause aliasing which would show false information okay now I'm down at 0.2 percent and it's still visible let's try 0.1 percent and well I can't really discern that note anymore let's go with a signal that doesn't have any added distortion or a pilot signal and let's go back to 0.1 Now it's hard to tell, but it's pretty much lost in the noise. I'll go back to 0.2, and yeah, you can definitely discern that there. Another important thing to understand is the linearity of the front end of the scope could also add nodes here. And there might be a blip here and here at a pretty low level, but again, this preamp has distortion levels that are order a couple orders of magnitude lower than this scope could ever show any of these nodes here besides my pilot signal are likely to be generated from the scope itself now as far as getting this to display correctly on the scope you have to do a few things to set up with this scope it seems to work best if I get five or six cycles of the waveform on the screen and it's important to get the amplitude as high as you can before cutting off. If you only you know, show this much, for example, you're not getting enough data into the digital to, or the analog to digital converter inside the scope. See, regardless if you're measuring 100 volts or 100 millivolts, there's amplifiers and attenuators in the front end of the scope. They get the voltage to the proper level on the input of the analog to digital converter. So to get as much data as possible, you need to have as much waveform on the screen. Now if you go off the screen, you start clipping and you see all that harmonic garbage on the screen. That's because, well, we went off the edge of the screen and it's clipping that data. So if we get as much data or a much waveform on the screen without going over, that will allow us to get as much information into the FFT mode. If I don't have enough, like here, you know, it squishes all the information up to the side and I can't really see the harmonics. So if I set it here, it's turn that off it's one kilohertz per graticule so it's easy to see where the harmonic is other than that there's just very basic information here windowing is set to Hanning and without getting into detail that's just the mathematics applied to generate this waveform see if I selected a different type of windowing like rectangular you'll get something like this which is pretty much unusable so I'll put it back here here's what the another one looks like the Blackman but I'm using Hanning here okay here's the Siglent I have it set up a lot more involved 
you have your uh, maximum points. It's the number of data points. And uh, I have it set for 256. If you set it real high, it updates really slow. And yeah, I'm not seeing really any better resolution. If I turn that down, let me go back up. Okay, yeah, that's one meg. 512, 256. It gets coarser. See, it gets really coarse when you turn it down too much, but it updates faster. See, it looks terrible there. Seems around maybe 256, 512. Why does it look uglier at 512? That's kind of weird. Well, at any rate, I set it to 256. Blackman window here looks better to me. More usable. See, it's, uh, what happened? See, this thing jumps around. See, there's Hanning. There's a fundamental and kind of sticking out the side is the second harmonic. And let's see here. Let's go back to Blackman. See with the Blackman window you get some separation there. And that's the problem. You know, the preamplifier doesn't have any distortion. So that's coming from the oscilloscope, these little nodes here. This, of course, is the pilot signal. It's at 1% right now. So, you know, this scope might be unusable because of these uh, harmonics that are showing up. Okay, switch to a 0.5% harmonic. See it's shrinking there. Let's do a 0.2%. You can see it's even smaller but still plainly visible. 0.1%. It's still visible. And no pilot signal. Took it out. See that's 1, 2, 3, 4.5. That's where it should appear. I turn it back on. Yep. 0.1%. So this scope can actually see down to 0.1%, whereas my other scope can only see down to 0.2. However, there's all these other harmonic nodes, and I think that's nonlinearities in the front end of the scope, the analog part of the scope. It actually makes this not really usable, or I could just ignore these. Now the Rigel could actually have these as well, but because it's in the noise floor, you just don't see them because, like I said, this scope is seeing down to a lower level. Okay, I'm playing with my acquisition modes here, seeing if there's any difference. We'll go down to peak detect. Let's go back up. And go back down. Oops. And I don't really see a difference. Average. And I'm not sure what this is. Extended res or something. And it made that node smaller. This is the pilot again set for 1%. And I'm not seeing really any difference there in usability. You see the second order harmonic is not showing up on the Rigel. Now this is what I would expect. I know the preamp has orders of magnitude lower distortion that either of these scopes could show. And this one's got these nodes. It just makes it unusable unfortunately even though it does have more resolution I can see down to 0.1% whereas I cannot see it on this scope 
but this one is showing me more what I would expect from the preamp. Now just the pilot signal here without any harmonic nodes. I guess I have to stick with the Rigel for uh, quick distortion tests. So you might be asking me why use the oscilloscopes. You know, if I can get lower measurements on my computer, you know, my computer I was able to see down to 0.004% using the preamp and testing this amplifier, but the uh, computer is a lot harder to set up. It's, it's just time consuming to set up the computer. You know, I might incorporate it more anyway. Now I can use external circuitry and still use the oscilloscopes. I can use a notch filter to get rid of as much of the fundamental I can, allowing me to turn this signal up, you know, because the fundamental would be much reduced. And that would allow the harmonic nodes to show up at a higher amplitude, and then I can measure them that way. But I'd have to create a filter at all the frequencies that I want to test at. Another thing I can do is called null testing of the amplifier. I can take the input signal and compare it to the output signal. So what I would do is you take the output signal. Because it's been amplified, you have to bring it down to the same level as the input signal. And after differentiating them, the only thing that would be left is the differences in that signal. So if the amplifier is adding any distortions to that signal, it'll show up in the null test. One limit of a null test is the amplifier will have a slight amount of phase shift. It doesn't matter tube, transistor, super high end, high quality. It's going to have some phase shift. And it is possible to deal with that. But that might be something to look at for testing these amplifiers. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I cannot social distance from my kitty. No, I can't. I gotta be near my kitty. I heard that kitties can catch 19. Yeah. Well, I guess that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.